Hello, everybody. I'm Susan Wagstaff, uh, one of the family therapists, and I work in the eating disorder service and in the early intervention and psychosis service. And hello, everybody. I, my name is Jo Hadfield. I'm a clinical psychologist and a systemic and family psychotherapist, um, and I work in more adult focused services in the family safeguarding service. So, so we're here to welcome you to a career in systemic family psychotherapy. And to give you a bit of an introduction about how to get into it and what it is that we do. So Joe, what do family therapists do? <laughs> Good question, Susan. Um, I think it's really sort of important to recognise that we are we work with people within their system so it might be kind of close social relationships um family is within our title but i think as family is being defined and broadened in, in different ways and in different circles we work much broadly um than than family for some people family is not necessarily their closest relationships or their social support network. So we work with all types of networks around around individuals, including so family, but like wider systems as well, like schools, the education system, sometimes the legal system, uh, wider professional systems. Often people have um, sort of different healthcare and, and social care providers, um, health or hospital systems. Um, and we work with families of all kinds. They don't have to be a mother and father and 2.4 children. They can be any kind of family that they describe themselves at, as we take all commas. Yeah, exactly. I think that's really important, isn't it, Susan, about that it's about kind of working with people's important relationships to help think a little bit around like communication because we know those of us who are better connected um it's kind of resilience is relational I guess isn't it Susan so we know that if we're better connected and better supported that helps us through really challenging times and it's times where we're more isolated and disconnected that that makes kind of uh, distress more difficult to manage that's right. And we see relationships as not just the problem, but also the solution, really. Um, it's, it's the relationships that are going to help people get to where they want to get to in life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that it's about the well-being of the whole system rather than an individual. Do you want to say a bit about the day in the life season? Well, yes, we might do therapy with families or couples, and we might also consult to uh, professionals about comp about some of the family systems that they're worried about. We consult to people who aren't family therapists as well about the families that they may be working with. And we also do supervision. And um, groups we facilitate groups and group supervision and we do a lot of teaching and training as well in our teams and outside our teams and research is also part of this job mm. and um you can get a lot of help from our trust if you want to do some research on on any sort of topic so that's something that is you know very easily part of this job mm. as well as service development and improvement yeah, you're right. And we can work within and across many different agencies. So some of the agencies might include more adult focus, mental health services, child focus, mental health services, you know, physical health services, education, social care, private practice and beyond. Um, I think the the importance of family is being or importance of social support is being more widely recognised. And so there are increasingly becoming more roles across different organize agency, organizations and agencies. That's right. So Joe, what other skills do we need as a family therapist? Well, because you've got more than one person in the room, you need to be able to communicate effectively and manage complex communications. Uh, 
And I think, you know, a lot of the time people come to us because a lot of they they've already tried lots of different solutions and they haven't created the change that's wished for. So it's about willing to take risks and kind of think outside the box when sort of the normal uh, like linear kind of ideas don't don't necessarily work. Um, time management because you're working with so many people in in a room at, at once it's trying to hear everyone's voice but also keep it within a contained space um i think like you're more powerfully exposed to emotions i think when you're working with systems because you've got people experiencing very different emotions at the same time and you're trying to manage those but also your own resonances with what's happening because we're all part of wider social groups and so as often very powerful resonances with people that we're working with in our own sort of personal and professional lives Report writing is really important. One, to communicate with the wider system about what we're doing and why we're doing it and how it's creating change. Um, but also, um, I think in terms of families having their experiences and their voices represented um, by the professionals that they work with. So we put a lot of um, thought and attention into whose voices we're attending to in our reports. Um, research skills you know we live in a world of evidence-based practice and so it's really important i think systemic and family psychotherapy is really getting to grips with the importance of showing our you know evidencing the effectiveness of our approaches and there's very good evidence but also management and leadership skills because we're we're trained to work with wider groups and I think we have um, a lot to offer in terms of thinking about working with professional groups as well as um, social, more social groups. Sometimes I think when working with families that you have to be a bit of a director to make sure everyone gets a chance to say what they think. And um, so it does take it does take some skills of uh, working with a group of people and giving everybody their space. Exactly, exactly. Particularly in like high conflict situations, I think, like you say. Well, I think that's also the thing that makes it interesting and fun to be a family therapist. Definitely, definitely. Humor is a very good skill. Um, so a bit like I think um, Susan was uh, alluding to earlier, as part of working across many different settings, we'll work with lots of different types of presentations or lots of different types of problems. Um, but given that Susan and I um, predominantly work in mental health services, so some of the things that we might work with are like self-harm and the impact from the wider family, um, lots of fears around risk or, or people dying by suicide. Um, things like obsessive compulsive disorder because the whole family is often involved in the obsessions and the compulsions in different ways or people can have very different responses to them similarly with anxiety or as susan was talking about in her role of working with people or families that where one member is or one or more members are experiencing psychosis uh, eating distress emotional dysregulation um, which is a significant part of the role that I do so we're often working with families that have you know parents who've not been helped to manage their own emotions or haven't had early relationships of co-regulation um, and I guess anything that can create conflict and distress so gender identity is another area but we work with all types of discrimination and the impact of racism, the impact of fears around gender diversity, all sorts of experiences that can contribute to people experiencing distress or it having a strain on their relationships. That's right. So how do we train, Susan? Well, there are various ways of getting into this field. Um, one of them is to uh, do a degree in psychology and go through that way. And some some people have started out as nurses. Some people have started out as social workers. Um, as a basic um, training, and then moved on to further training in family therapy. Uh, so you do have to have a prior professional qualification and something else. Um, and then. 
the the full qualification as a family therapist is a four year part time master's degree. You can work while studying for this degree. We were talking earlier, weren't we, Susan, about the kind of the diversity of, of roles that to become a systemic and family psychotherapist, it's the four years, but there are also um, kind of family work oriented roles like systemic practitioner roles, which are the year one and year two um, training. So people can work with families, but they don't call it family therapy. That's right. And um, the, uh, trusts are hiring these, these sort of uh, people more and more now. This is just a new, new, newer training. That's uh, and sometimes people will do a couple of years of the training, become systemic practitioners, work a bit, and then come back and do the la the last two bit to get the master's degree at a later date. Don't have to do it all at once. Yeah, thank you, Susan. So we'll kind of give some examples of that, um, and I'll let you lead. Susan, in terms of a, a nursing route. Right, so so um, somebody might train as a, um, do their basic nurse training and then their um, acute mental health inpatient nursing. This is an example of somebody, you don't have to do it this way, this is an example of one of the nurses who's now a family therapist. So she did, then she worked um, in uh, child and adolescent mental health community nursing. And then she worked in a child and adolescent mental health specialist community team. And then she did her years one and two at the Oxford Family Institute. And then she did the years three and four to get the final master's degree to be fully qualified. And I think you're, what you said, Susan, was really important that these are um, part time trainings alongside your working role. So it develops your practice, but you're already in practice. You're already working within a context in which you meet with families, um, not necessarily a health context, but in a, in a context where fa family work is occurring. Um, so there, there are many different routes, like as we said, there can be lots of different core professions that you can hold. Um, mine was via psychology, so I did my psychology degree. Um, I went into forensic services as a healthcare assistant um, and then became an assistant psychologist. And I think because people are um, institutionalised and, and they are kept away from their families, you can really see the kind of importance of um, family when, when people are isolated from their family or the impact of that. Um, I then did my clinical psychology doctorate and was lucky enough to have uh, people that were a part of the leadership uh, team on the course that were systemically trained and, and I had a specialist systemic placement. Um, and then, yeah, I was working as a clinical psychologist, did my years one and two at the Tavistock Clinic in London. And then I did, uh, I had a little break and then I did my years three and four at the Institute of Family Therapy again in London. Um, but there are lots of different routes in and there are, you know, they aren't necessarily as neat as this looks. They're not always straightforward successions. Um, but there are lots of things happening in between each arrow. That's right. It can be a, it can be a process rather than something you just brush out and do all the training for all at once. Yeah, indeed. I think this is just a, a basic introduction into kind of what, what systemic and family psychotherapy is about. Um, but if you want more information, as you can see from this slide, there are um, lots of different websites that you can go to that give you a bit more information, a bit more in-depth information. Um, Susan, I would really recommend, I don't know about you, but I really recommend the AFT website because it has a lot of information for families who are looking for sort of family systemic psychotherapists, but also information for professionals who might be interested in developing their career in that direction. Um, and it gives you a, a list of accredited training courses um, as well, so it can give you a bit more information about what the different training courses provide. Yeah, it's a great association for, because once you're fully trained, it continues to provide a lot of training and support throughout your career. 
-hmm. Yeah, and there's also a separate leaflet for you to have a look at, but hopefully we'll meet you on day two when you can ask more questions. But thank yeah. you for listening. Yeah.